like this. Um, of course, there is no real rule or restriction uh, in terms of what we can really wish for, actually. Obviously, of course, according to the Buddhist tradition, or not just tradition, but to the Buddhist method, it is said that um, the most um, mm, uh, wonderful thing to wish for is to become Buddhas, actually. Uh, or may think it's too ambitious, but uh, there is no rule, there is no restriction, so therefore, uh, to wish to become Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, which is pretty much the same thing, actually. So, um, but of course, however, if one still feels that this is um, too unrealistic, it doesn't matter. You can, uh, or any one of us, or every one of us can wish for whatever we want. The trick is um, that when we aspire, we have to, as I said, aspire as fervently as possible, without any distraction, without any other thoughts. And when I say any other thoughts, um, I mean to say um, the worry or the anxiety or in other words the expectation. Uh, we have to pray it without expectation, that's the thing. When we pray or aspire, we pray as fervently as possible, but at the same time the fine line is that we don't expect the, for the result. For example, let's say I wish to become a Buddha, but I don't. Uh, but if I can, I try not to worry about the result, whether I will become a Buddha or whether I will not become a Buddha. That's the fine line. It is as simple as that, actually. Obviously, we are, how to say, if you think of a race or if you think of, uh, in terms of species, we are definitely a, a type of species um, who worry a lot, of course. Uh, who are almost, um, uh, almost by nature, uh, always worry. And so therefore, it may be difficult to, of course, uh, to also uh, stop worrying, but trying to stop worrying may, be, may become another form of worry. Uh, so therefore, uh, in a way, one could say that we are all united under one banner that uh, we are all worried, you know. Um, so, in this case, um, although, as I said, uh, the, as I mentioned, the simplest point, which is not to expect and to worry, um, however, of course, since we have built up this habit of worrying still, uh, if one feels that because of it, again, uh, my aspirations may not come true again, and so therefore, again, uh, fall into despair. It's, this is possible, of course, and so therefore, in this case, um, the the approach is that um, if the habitual pattern of worry rises, then once again we let it be again. Meaning, we don't worry about it. We we let it worry. We we let the worrying aspect of ourselves be. Uh, if it wants to worry, worry as much as it wants. But we don't take part in it. We just let the habit do whatever it wants to do. But at the same time, what I want is what, what, what we want is simply to aspire. That's it. So in that way, then we don't con well, say we don't fall into a conflict with ourselves. Now that's the mindset. That's the. Mm, that's how we motivate ourselves. Now, in terms of um, the words we recite, the words we repeat, the words maybe that are shown on the screen or in your booklet, when you recite those, again, of course, there may be another type of worry that what on earth am I actually re reading? And so therefore, in this case, uh, we don't have to worry. Of course, there is a reason, uh, which is that uh, um, not to think of, our, not to put ourselves in an inferior position, but to be uh, in good terms with ourselves. We recognize that at the moment 
uh, we are like uh, children, let's say. And so uh, we don't become embarrassed of, for the fact that we realize that we are at a uh, childlike state in terms of um, uh, we may not have the full information in terms of how to, how to aspire. And so therefore, what we do is we read and recite these, uh, what is known as perfect speech. Meaning, these uh, prayers are not um, composed by some, how do you say, uh, out of some random thoughts, uh, uh, out of some, uh, how do you say, uh, some drunken state or something like that. But these are words uh, formed, composed by actual realized Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And so therefore in this case we can completely rely on these words. And when we rely on this, these words, what is happening is that <coughs> oh, what we have to, the way we have to think is that uh, um, that these words are spoken, obviously, from the very lips of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and we just follow that rhythm, you know. And so, in terms of um, their skill and their experience, obviously, they have direct experience of actually how to form the simplest of speech and the most profound speech in order to uh, help us transform our sort of uh, childlike state right now uh, into a, um, I say, state of um, an enlightened um, attitude. And so therefore, we can completely rely on these words. All we need to do is just follow the words. Uh, in this case, it may be a little bit exotic because it's not in your language, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the words are carefully composed, carefully examined over and over again throughout centuries just to make sure that each of these words are uh, never uh, is contaminated by any other uh, I say, uh, random thoughts. Then finally now uh, we have nothing else to do of course for the next few hours uh, but simply to relax of course uh, make yourselves comfortable, of course, in your uh, sitting position. Um, and then follow the words. And uh, every now and then, if uh, random thoughts uh, seems to uh, creep in, um, you just let them be. Uh, you don't you get force it out uh, from your mind. You just let them, let them be, let the worry do its own thing. Um, <coughs> yeah, but you yourselves just follow the words and um, uh, every now and then if you feel that you need a bit of an inspiration uh, because um, you feel that you're just following some random noise and then once again remember what I said uh, so far that uh, um, in your heart Whatever you think is most important in this case, beside what is already suggested uh, in the teachings, uh, in the Dharma, then uh, think of what, what you think is most important. For example, maybe uh, the, the health of your parents or your child or uh, some uh, fellow friend, dear friend, or it could be um, some other thing. So whatever you think is important, uh, there are no restrictions in terms of you are not allowed to think of that. You can't think of that. Maybe use that <coughs> as a very useful cue uh, to actually once again engage into the practice. And so therefore, tell yourself that you don't have to do anything physical. Even mentally, you don't have to do anything stressful. All you need to do is just follow the words and uh, then Try to sort of, how uh, uh, to say, vacate yourself or free yourself or, as I said yesterday, uh, think of yourself um, being in a, some form of holiday, you know, where you don't have to think about the bills, you don't have to think about the rent, 
you don't have to think about uh, the electricity, the traffic, uh, the schedules for the next few hours. Uh, you have complete control and freedom for the next three hours. Uh, so, in that manner, then I would like all of you to join me in this prayer. I'm sure all of the regulars who will come here, who are under the guidance of Venerable Taha, uh, I'm sure you will have good experience in terms of um, how to um, stay calm, composed, relaxed uh, when you're praying. So use all of those experience here and uh, I will pray all the Venerable Sanghas, Bhikshus and Bhikshunis, they will also pray and you also pray. Um, you don't have to think too many in terms of numbers <coughs> Or um, I wish my friend was here to, to pray with me, or I wish um, my parents or my children also knew how to pray. So of that kind of positive worries, but nevertheless worries nonetheless. So you don't have to think too many of those uh, things. You just do what you can do here the, the, in the best of your ability. Then all will be well. Substance. 
probably uh, the most powerful addiction is actually expectation. And uh, this thirst and uh, yearning of results uh, could be happiness, could be anything. Uh, and so therefore, <clears throat> since we are trying to do something very spiritual and genuine, uh, obviously we don't want to ruin this, yes? Uh, we want to cherish this, we want to see through to the end that it uh, goes as genuine and beautiful as we have uh, initiated. And so therefore, it's uh, very important to observe how powerful these ex expectations are. So, therefore, for example, if you are wishing long life, happiness, uh, prosperity, anything, you know, even Buddhahood, that um, if it's all right to have some expectation, of course, because that's how we are born, up, um, more or less um, born, uh, but nevertheless, um, to somehow uh, make it aware as much as possible to yourself that this doesn't turn into an addiction. If it happens, then all the merit that we accumulate will, how do you say, will not, how do you say, turn into something bad, but it will become a waste. So therefore, it's very important, um, besides, of course, um, taking care of other types of addictions, could be coffee, could be tea, could be anything, or sugar or candy. Um, uh, the essential part here uh, is uh, to really uh, not force oneself, but at the same time, in a very mild yet and subtle, uh, subtle way, uh, to make sure that um, what we aspire now, you know, for example, during this session, doesn't turn into some kind of a seed for additional results and success. session is um, complete and uh, through this um, recitation uh, through our collective effort um, of aspiring for the virtues um, will definitely of course um, amount to amazing things uh, when I say amazing in terms of <coughs> The accumulation of both merit and wisdom um, has, in a way, uh, found its way uh, to become uh, timeless or limitless or inexhaustible uh, because uh, of the uh, lack of expectation, actually, uh, because. Uh, the, way, uh, the way we aspire is very fervent, uh, very genuine, and uh, we don't take any uh, ownership of it, meaning we dedicate them all to everyone. And so therefore, although this uh, accumulation may not be visible or tangible, um, as, uh, let's say, solid, uh, material uh, forms or shapes or colors, um, the uh, how do you say the weight and the um, and the quality of the merit uh, is um, how do you say uh, flawless and uh, inevitable, meaning that um, it will. Uh, benefit. So therefore, we don't have to expect. 
then um, finally um, <coughs> I hope that all of you enjoyed your time here um, the more we spend time um, or however much we can spend time um, in um, in the practice of Buddha Dharma uh, we will find all the joy we need so therefore uh, without uh, how to say um, having to burden yourself with uh, too many goals or targets or objectives um, just um, by telling yourself that whenever you practice you're actually doing it uh, not with a sense of urgency with a sense of mission but but you are just taking time out for yourself to simply actually uh, relax and enjoy and by doing so, by mm, trying to develop a mentality like that will automatically mm, uh, how do you say, make, uh, make yourself look forward to uh, finding that time and rather than seeing it as a sort of a daily routine that you have to uh, accomplish sort of thing that uh, you have to uh, it's supposed to be healthy for you but at the same time you don't have time it's like saying um, you must not forget to take medicine you must uh, uh, let us say go to the gym you know uh, you know that it's good for you but at the same time you know it's stressful so uh, the, the point of um, uh, practicing the Buddha Dharma is not in any way to give ourselves pressure. It's uh, supposed to be something enjoyable, so that's how it should be. And if we are able to uh, motivate ourselves in that manner, then um, automatically that kind of, um, as we say, vibe or um, say influence you know will be there to the people around ourselves so it could be our family members it could be friends it could be colleagues it could be even strangers and uh, then they will uh, they will understand that change of body language in yourself without having to actually tell them to to um, without having to actually sell uh, you know, what you enjoy doing, you know, having to uh, promote some form of a propaganda on them, just by being yourself, just by yourself actually enjoying uh, your your sort of uh, the way you carry yourself, the way you behave, the your body language will automatically change, and then that brings comfort, stability, sense of confidence that when the people around you come near you that somehow they can sense that whenever they are around you that they feel more at ease and so they will, they will want to know, they will become curious in a good way they will want to learn the same thing and you tell them if should they wish to learn then you also tell them exactly how you do it that you're doing it simply because you like it, not because someone says so, not because you have to do it, but you like it. So it's like that, I think. Um, <coughs> as I said earlier, um, expectations um, are interesting, but nevertheless, um, it's not a must that we have to expect. <coughs> Um, others around us may be used to uh, expect for, for a long, long time. Uh, maybe that's how they grew up. Um, we don't have to correct them, of course, but we ourselves, if we are aware, then it's not a must that we have to follow that same pattern and continue to expect and to teach uh, that um, habit to others, to, to the other generations. <coughs> because as I said, uh, when we expect too much, 
then it slowly, slowly it can turn into some sort of an addiction where you have to see the results, otherwise um, you're not happy. And if that happens more and more, if you allow that to happen more and more, then uh, slowly it builds anxiety, especially great disappointment when it doesn't happen. And uh, then you begin to doubt your own effort, you begin to doubt your own, um, uh, your own say, enthusiasm. And then one begins to get confused and lost. So therefore, uh, the uh, approach that Buddhas and Buddhas have of us uh, initiate, continue and see through all the way is that uh, they don't bother too much with expectation. They just do it, as I said right now, because they enjoy it. They enjoy, for example, uh, helping people. They enjoy uh, generating merit. They enjoy, um, for example, um, not bothering about expectations. In that way, that they can see that uh, uh, the uh, everyday pattern almost transforms into some sort of a wishful feeling jewel as if uh, everything is already taken care of, sort of thing. And in that way, then they have simply no pressure at all. And um, that is what we are trying to achieve. Uh, and if you are able to do so, I mean, if you, if you put little, little energy every day into not expecting too much, before you know it, uh, you will have achieved it. Uh, for just sheer enjoyment, of course, one can expect. <coughs> now, nothing wrong with it. For example, if one um, um, plays uh, chess, let's say, or watch a sport or something, uh, just for the sake of enjoyment, one may take a side, you know, and, uh, and see where, uh, where it ends up. But it's just for laughs, nothing more. Um, whereas when one takes it too seriously, uh, especially this habit of taking serious uh, in expecting, uh, is uh, often is something that often happens, of course, when one sees that um, either superstitiously um, that um, if one uh, uh, prepares enough uh, and works work hard enough, <coughs> put a lot of put enough effort, and then of course all the way uh, expecting as much as one can. Then um, from time to time one can see that well, it it looks like as if there is, there are results, and so therefore um, that kind of um, uh, how do I say mindset. Uh, will slowly, slowly, as I said, it turns into addiction, and um, um, it creates actually um, way more disturbance within ourselves, almost like a, almost like a, a war, let's say, um, <coughs> a very silent one, you know, but nevertheless very, very destructive, and so therefore. Um, uh, Often, when we initially uh, learn to let go of expectations, um, uh, initially there may be certain symptoms that one feels that this is not the right way, this is um, like a child's play, that I'm not uh, mm, taking the situation seriously. And so one may have doubts and, uh, how do you say, anxieties like that creeping in. And so, these are very normal. One doesn't have to worry uh, that these thoughts come. Um, it's, it's, it's like the experience of um, peacetime. If there was a lot of war, and suddenly if there's a peacetime, one is actually more used to the wartime than the peacetime. And so, like with, every, like with most uh, uh, individuals who have gone to war, in actual war, 
when they have peace time, they don't know what to do with it. Uh, there is an uh, immense sense of boredom and, um, and uh, the quietness and the, and, the, and the peace actually creates even more disturbance. So it's something like that. So therefore we don't have to uh, pay much attention to it. <coughs> These are things uh, we can uh, just expect, but um, bottom line, if uh, we, how to say, on a step-by-step uh, -step basis, let's say, on a day-to-day -day basis maybe, or on a week-to-week -week basis, um, if you slowly, just for fun in a way, to begin with, to expect less and less, yet at the same time when you do things, you do it wholeheartedly. If you wash your dishes, you wash it wholeheartedly. It may, but you, but with, but you don't expect it to be uh, clean all the time, let's say. Maybe it gets washed, maybe it doesn't, but you do your best. And uh, often it's a very, not just a spiritual thing, but even a, on a worldly manner, we, we say that I did my best and so therefore I have no regrets. Yes, same thing. So in here, when we do things, we do it fervently, wholeheartedly, um, but at the same time, we don't expect anything in return. And uh, then we will always be at peace. Oh, Thank you so much. Thank you.